Last week, we reported on the number of temporary layoffs that are turning into permanent job losses. Now Goldman Sachs is projecting even more permanent job losses coming down the pike as a wave of mergers, acquisitions and corporate takeovers sweeps through the economy. Goldman Sachs Group President John Waldron warned that we're going to see more big businesses doing better, but there will be more job losses along the way as large corporations look to consolidate smaller companies. You are going to see a fairly sizable amount of large cap M&A coming with stronger, healthier companies being the acquirer and taking advantage of weaknesses in their industry or elsewhere. The Fed's extraordinarily loose monetary policy coupled with federal government intervention will help facilitate these mergers. Big companies and industries hit hardest by the pandemic can tap financing at obscenely low interest rates. They can then use that money to gobble up smaller competitors. Waldron said the market is giving them the license to do M&A, encouraging more consolidation. But it isn't really the market greenlighting this consolidation. It's central bank and government manipulation of the market creating an environment ripe for corporate consolidation and the resulting job losses. Waldron said we should expect sticky unemployment as we move forward. We're already seeing significant trouble in the labor market. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the number of job losses categorized as permanent grew by 345,000 to 3.8 million people in September. In other words, nearly 4 million unemployed Americans have no prospects of returning to work. Mergers and acquisitions won't be the only drag on the job market. The looming prospect of more corporate bankruptcies and business closures will put even more downward pressure on employment. Large company bankruptcies have already surged to a level not seen since 2010 and more than 420,000 small businesses have closed their doors permanently since the beginning of the pandemic. That represents a staggering 7.1% of all small businesses. A Brookings report estimates that the U.S. economy has lost some 4 million jobs in the small business sector, that will only return with the creation of new businesses. Lockdowns and the government central bank response to the ensuing economic fallout may have permanently scarred the labor market and there are signs of deep wounds that won't quickly heal. In a nutshell, a lot of people will likely never return to work. Everything that has happened in 2020 so far has set us up for a grand finale that none of us will ever forget. This year we have already witnessed the worst public health crisis in about a hundred years, widespread lockdowns all over the nation, a crippling economic collapse and civil unrest in major cities across America. To say that the American people are in a bad mood would be a major understatement. Now days away from a bitterly contested presidential election, and as you will see below, one survey recently found that a majority of Americans are expecting violence. That is extremely unfortunate, but these are the times in which we live. Our country is literally falling apart all around us, and nobody seems to have a way to stop it from happening. And the worse economic conditions become, the worse the mood of the nation is going to get. On Thursday, we learned that another 840,000 Americans filed new claims for unemployment benefits last week. If someone had told me late last year that 63 million Americans would file new claims for unemployment benefits this year, I would have thought that person was crazy. Prior to 2020, the worst number for a single week in all of US history was 695,000, and now we have been way above that figure every single week of this pandemic. Of course the layoffs just keep rolling along. Right now, it is being reported that Warner Media expects to lay off thousands of workers in the coming weeks. AT&T's Warner Media is preparing a restructuring that seeks to reduce costs by as much as 20% as the COVID-19 panic drains income from movie tickets, cable subscriptions and TV ads, reports the Wall Street Journal. The layoffs are expected to begin in the coming weeks and would result in thousands of layoffs across Warner Brothers Studios and TV channels like HBO, TBS and TNT, the paper said. Personally, I wouldn't be saddened if Warner Media completely shut down on a permanent basis. They produce an endless barrage of garbage programming that is corrupting the minds of millions of Americans, and our society would definitely be better off without them. But at the same time that millions upon millions of Americans have been losing their jobs, those at the very top of the economic food chain have been getting even wealthier thanks to the Federal Reserve's reckless intervention in the financial markets. At this point, the top 1% of all Americans have more than 15 times more money than the bottom 50% combined. 
According to the latest Fed data, the top 1% of Americans have a combined net worth of $34.2 trillion, or 30.4% of all household wealth in the U.S., while the bottom 50% of the population holds just $2.1 trillion combined, or 1.9% of all wealth. If you think that there isn't a lot of resentment out there, then you haven't been paying attention. We are seeing the rise of a Robin Hood mentality among many that live in deeply impoverished areas, and when things get really crazy out there they are going to be hitting wealthy neighborhoods really hard. Unfortunately, a lot of people believe that this upcoming election could potentially be the spark that sets off a lot more civil unrest. Personally, I have such a bad feeling about what is going to happen, and I believe that having so many people voting by mail could cause all sorts of problems. In fact, even the mainstream media is admitting that we could see a million ballots that are sent through the mail rejected for one reason or another. Absentee ballot rejections this November are projected to reach historic levels, risking widespread disenfranchisement of minority voters and the credibility of election results, a USA Today, Columbia Journalism Investigations and PBS series Frontline Investigation found. At least 1.03 million absentee ballots could be tossed if half of the nation votes by mail. Discarded votes jump to 1.55 million if 75% of the country votes absentee. In the latter scenario, more than 185,000 votes could be lost in Florida, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, states considered key to capturing the White House. Any system of voting that could potentially disenfranchise a million voters is deeply broken and should not be used. But at this point it is too late to do anything about it. More than 6 million people have already voted, and more votes are being sent in with each passing day. Of course millions of other Americans are also deeply concerned about the integrity of this election. Just check out the results of a recent YouGov survey. The YouGov poll of 1,999 registered voters found that nearly half 47% disagree with the idea that the election is likely to be fair and honest. And that slightly more than half 51% won't generally agree on who is the legitimately elected president of the United States. The online poll was conducted October 1-2 and has a margin of error of plus or minus 2.56 percentage points. In essence, about half the country believes that this election may not be legitimate. That is a major national crisis right there. In addition, YouGov has also found that 56% of Americans believe that there will be an increase in violence as a result of the election. In addition, a YouGov poll of 1,505 voters found that 56% said they expect to see an increase in violence as a result of the election. That question had a margin of error of 4.2 percentage points. This definitely is not the America that I grew up in. In the old days, nobody would have ever imagined widespread violence after a presidential election. Another recent survey discovered that a whopping 61% of Americans believe that the US could be on the verge of another civil war. We have never seen anything like this before, and at this point it is undeniable that our society is breaking down all around us. But instead of bringing us together, the results of this upcoming election are only going to deepen our divisions no matter who wins. Everything that our forefathers worked so hard to build is at risk, and we are getting very, very close to crossing the point of no return. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.